Hey! Next time it'll be your fingers. <laughs> Captain to crew. Silent running. Missile targeting routine about to commence. Sonar? Sonar cleared, Captain. Scope? Scope cleared, Captain. Catcher? We have a fix, Captain. Updating missile tracking system now. Okay. You know the routine. Starting to lock into the East Coast targets. Washington locked. Ballast in order. Pumps. Good. Conditions are good. Yeah. I said silent running. Shut up. Philadelphia locked. Is that a problem? No, it's more fueling. I'm patching it up. New York locked. Reagan and Gorbachev are gonna freeze our butts off in Iceland. There's no point negotiating anyway. Just wait a while, Russia's gonna self-destruct. We've been waiting for that for a long time, Baker. Pulling the nukes out of the North Atlantic is on the table for the summer. We could be out of a job. Well, I can think of better ways to serve my country than babysitting boomers. Dead ahead about 3,000 yards. Move us in closer, put us tighter than his wash. Captain, there's something behind us. Sounds like a target. The screw's breaking up the signal. Stop the engines. He's slowing, sir. He may be on to us. Cut the engine. This is the captain. Attention, all hands. Ultra quiet, please. I say again, ultra quiet. Thank you. Sonar. Negative, captain. Boston luck.
missile tracking complete. Ahead, 10 knots. Left full rudder. Left full rudder. She's banking left, Captain. Follow her, sir. No, we stay put. Crazy Ivan coming up. She's going to double back. Right. This Steady is the captain. Push, push, All push, hands stand zero. by for Crazy She's Ivan. Diving, I say sir. again, She's stand by for Crazy board. Ivan. Say again, sonar. She's diving, sir. Still turning to port. Disengage the screw. Screw disengage, sir. Volodya, take over. I'll do the key drill now. And warn the KGB. Readiness to condition two. Janajni, report for key drill. Any more tricks from you boys, you eat shit for the rest of the trip. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, oh yeah. Morning. How was your watch? Okay. Any problems? Well, fuel leak in missile tube 13. Can you manage? Yeah, take the captain. Be all right for the time being. How's your eye? It's okay. I think this is a good time for you to see the doctor. And keep an eye on that leak. The good eye. Morning, Captain. All right, lad. Morning, Captain. Yes, sir. Jenny, report for key drill. Good morning, Mr. things in Moscow? Catch you at a bad time? I was shaking. Engines restarted, sir. She's off our port beam. And circling. Range 900 yards. What's our speed? We're at 10 knots. Very well. Morning, Doctor. Morning, Captain. No one in sick bay? No. I don't know how you do it. Whatever it is, keep it up. Lieutenant, please confirm that I'm inspecting the nuclear key held by Captain Britanov. Yes. This is to confirm that I'm inspecting the nuclear key held by security officer Shemich. I didn't know he played. Lieutenant, will you confirm that the key is in good order and secure? Yes. Doctor. Please confirm that this key is in good order and secure. Yes. Good. Captain, I know it's none of my business, but Shinishni feels that you ignore him. Every time you meet, you just say, how's Moscow? I know he's KGB, but... That's all right. I'll keep that in mind. Be nice to Comrade Shinichi. You smell nice, Comrade. How are things in Moscow? complete. Are we clear? Nothing to our front, sir. What's the course? 220. Increase speed to 15 knots. Increase speed. 15 knots. Increase speed to 15 knots. Thank you. Where is she, Sonar? It's a crazy Ivan, sir. He's turning up so much water, I can't make out I the signal. I understand. Now give us your best shot. She's behind us. She's below us. She's heading this way, Captain. Let's get a mark before we lose her. Five, four, three, two, now. 1,000 yards and closing on the port quarter.
Captain. Yes. She's right underneath. Hold your course. Stabilize the ship, blow the ballast tanks. Ups, blow those ballast tanks. Captain, she's dropping away. Uh, I didn't see that, sir. Well, do you see it now? Yes, sir. I have a submarine right on top of us. Take us up 20 meters. He's right on top of us, sir. Incline planes, 15 degrees. Ups. Incline planes, 15 Ups. degrees. Cap, she's coming up again. Engage the screw. Left full rudder, bear away. Left full rudder and bear away. That guy really was pissed. He's not the only one. Damage. Nothing recorded as yet. Sonar, where are they now? Going to post, sir. Keep it steady at 40 meters. Depth 40 meters. Key in a new course and speed. Depth 40 meters. What are you thinking? We scared the shit out of them. Take that to the doctor, and don't spill it. Compliments of the galley, sir. Thank you, Sergei. Just put it down there. You should be on watch for me. I was just fetching the doctor's tea, sir. We hit something. A dead whale. An American submarine. It's okay. Wash it out in salt water. Shinichni, you're full of shit. That story's gonna go around the boat in no time. Thanks, Doctor. Captain, come in. Captain, we have a major leak in silo 13. Water is mixing with the missile fuel, causing the gas to build up. It'll blow any minute. Vent to silo. Open 13! Open 13! Captain, easy does it. Damage control officers, prepare your reports. I say again, damage Captain. control officers, stand by. Yes, Sona. Explosion was on the other craft, sir. Thank you, sir. Captain, we've lost missile 13. Missile bay. Oh, yeah. Anyone. Yes. Low all battles from the forward tanks. Yes, sir. Missile bay. The boats of the bridge.
says the cap. Sergey, calm down. Let's call you. He's collapsed, sir. The smoke's deadly men are dropping like flies. Evacuate the compartment quick as you can. Yes, sir. Evacuate. Evacuate. How's she doing, Sonar? Leveling out, sir. All right, stay well clear. They're coming around. Get up! Ahead, full power! Disengaging! Now! Captain, do you intend to surface? Because right now we don't have any way of controlling the ascent. Yes, I intend to surface. Captain, to crew, hold tight! Thank God for that. No, I mean really up. They're going to surface. Say again, Sonar? They're surfacing, Captain. I don't believe it. Ten o'clock, heading north, northeast. Captain. My God, a boomer on the surface. If I wasn't seeing it with my own eyes, I wouldn't believe it. Christ, she's a huge mother. Anything? Nothing. I can't even see the surface. There's too much smoke. Sonar? Yes, Captain. I have a Los Angeles-class attack submarine on the port quarter at 1,000 meters. <sighs> they have no shame. Check on deck. See what damage we have. Senichny, where are you? Captain, I'm in compartment five. There's fumes everywhere. How's Kolya? He's dead. Anyone else? Recall and Miros. Evacuate the two six. Pshinichny, I'm putting you in charge of the aft section. I'm KGB, Captain, not a sailor. The explosion has cut this boat in half. I need a senior officer to take him out of the aft section. And that is you. Yes, sir. I'll send someone over as soon as I can. In the meantime, I need to know exactly what happened in the missile bay and get some engineers and start ventilation. Yes, sir. Remedia! Yes, sir! Locate the engineers. The captain needs a damage report on the missile bay. You know how to vent to atmosphere? Uh, yes, sir! You go in with them. Evacuate the rest to six. Yes, sir! Reactor room. Report, please. Reactor room. Captain, this is Belikov. Yes? Both reactors are online. No sign of damage. Good. Check the backup systems. Yes, sir. Pumps, how much water did we take on? I think, guess I would say about 70 tons. Patya, mark that down. 70 tons. 70 tons. In 15 minutes. In 15 minutes. 40 meters depth. 40 meters depth. Captain, this is Jenny C. They're going in now.
Captain, this is Gasparian. I'm in a missile bay. Go ahead. There's a mass of missile fuel leaking from 213. And we got sparks flying from power cables. This place might go up any minute. Check the other tubes for damage. All right. chances of pumping out the fuel. It's sludge. It won't pump. It'll burn like hell. What about the fumes it creates? If we can't contain them, the whole ship will be contaminated. And if it builds up, the whole of the missile bay could blow. Not only will we be vaporized, but the entire eastern seaboard of the United States will feel the heat. So what's your solution? Burn off the fumes before they explode. I can't set fire to a compartment full of missiles. <laughs> down here. If the fuel ignites, how long would it burn? 15, 20 hours, minimum. Short of flooding the bay, there's no way of stopping it once it starts. We can't hold out that long. We don't have enough oxygen. <laughs> Captain, Captain, this is Gasparian. There's fire on the water. Keep run. Get out of there. Fire, Then we have your fire. Get back in the hole. And make sure you keep the reactors running. Yes, sir. You need the power. The southerly coast to Havana. We'll be there within 48 hours. No, nope. we're going to head north. I'm turning around. I see. Course and speed? 035. Steer. 035. Course 035. Full ahead. Speed. Full ahead. Speed. Full ahead. Moving north. Making a lot of smoke. What's your assessment, Jack? He's on fire. Explosion of that magnitude of midships must have ruptured the fuel lines. God knows what. I think we should alert command. We can't break radio silence. Yeah, but if they can't control that blaze, if she stays on the surface, anything could happen. Even a meltdown. We're less than 500 miles off the eastern seaboard, for Christ's sake. The trade winds would carry the fallout straight to the coast. 
Come on, Jack. You know procedure as well as I do. If command wants to know what the hell's going on up there, they got ways of finding out. That's sir. Enough. I cannot break radio silence. I'll be in my cabin. XO is the con. I've got the con. This one, the next one. Thirty-three, is that all? Captain, we've just counted the oxygen containers. We've only got thirty-three that work. That's less than an hour supply. We've got sixty men in here. We'll have to move them back to six. No one moves. I don't think you understand, Captain. The fire spread to five. The lower level is in flames. The upper level is full of smoke. Shinichi, you will fight the fire at all costs. You're too close to the reactor. It mustn't spread. Yes, sir. So the fire is in the missile bay. And the heat is such that it could trigger the launch of one of the nuclear missiles. It's a remote possibility, I grant you. But it's one you should be aware of, as they are targeted at the United States. No, we are doing everything we um, can, General Secretary. We have ships on the way. Captain Cosmic. And an airdrop of oxygen. The commander? His name is Britano. What is he like? He's a submariner. That's what he's like. They're all the same. Stuck up, self-confident, usually a pain in the backside. Yes, I think you should inform the Americans, yes, for no other reason than they probably know already. Yes, Comrade General Secretary, of course I will keep you informed. Yeah. Sit down, Captain. He says he won't call Washington unless the situation is serious, and when he does, it will be to tell them it isn't. That, he says, is what politicians are for. <laughs> he says we are to remember one word, Reykjavik. Gentlemen, this is Captain Kuzmenko. The captain was Britannia's number two during his last two missions. Can I ask what the situation is? Britannia's on the surface about 300 miles east of Bermuda. He's heading north at about 10 knots. He's asked for oxygen bottles to be airdropped as a matter of urgency. That's all we can get from him. With a fire in the missile bay, he'll be pretty busy. The entire technical staff of the Northern Fleet has been assembled to give him advice. How can we if he doesn't tell us what's gone wrong? Admiral, with respect, we're talking about a man who lives and breathes submarines. If he needs advice, he will ask for it. What are his problems? First, how to contain the fire before it reaches the reactors. And second, remote as it may seem, can he stop the missiles blasting through their hatches and destroying America? Or can he handle a crisis of this magnitude? You mean, is he likely to lose his nerve? He's the best man you could have in the situation. But Cuba's only two days away. Any officer with even a modicum of sense would plot a southerly course for Havana. Why is Britannov heading north? Well, Captain. He's making for deeper water. It's obvious he fears the worst. I got another Soviet ship changing course here. Coming out of Havana. That's got to be the Krasnoyarsky. She's in a hurry. She always is on a Friday night. The crew gets drunk, boards late, then goes like hell to make up the time. Maybe. But she's a third Soviet ship in the last hour to change course. Log and compute the new course and speed. Good. Now put it on the table. Realign the other two Soviet ships that changed course earlier. Extend their tracks. What is it? I'm not sure. Guys, check any traffic going in and out of the Bermuda box, any Soviet ship that's changed course within the last few hours and extend their tracks now. Yes, ma'am. Holy shit. Yes, Captain. It might be good to put some water on the wall. Yeah. We have a message from Moscow, sir. Air drop of oxygen on its way. Do they say when? No. Oh, 
morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. What have we got? Every Soviet ship in the North Atlantic altered course just after midnight, all heading for this spot. We picked up one of its subs, a boomer, in the area yesterday, and we're pretty sure that's where they're heading. This degree of response indicates that it has to be in real trouble. All right. Call the White House Situation Room, brief them on what we've got here. Meanwhile, I'll talk to the Joint Chiefs. Barry, call my home, give my compliments to my wife, ask her to send my uniform. The Krasnoyarsky just altered course, sir, and the Pushkin off of St. George's Bank. If you retriangulate, you can get a new intersection somewhere here. So the boom is moving north. What's your speed? It averages out at 11 knots, sir. Even a damaged sub would be able to travel at twice that speed. Unless she's on the surface. Clive, call the Chief of Naval Operations. Request we go to Threatcon Bravo Sir. and get me a P3 off the ground from Bermuda. Let's get some photos of this thing, see what the hell we've got here for sure. Captain, this is better for the five. We're losing control. The first time touch, we can't get near the missile bay, and it's blending fast. Get your men back to six. Back to six! Back to six! surface just outside the Bermuda box. Where the hell's the Bermuda box? Piece of ocean about 800 miles east of Miami. Okay, Morning, Larry. Admiral. Gentlemen. White House sent you down to make sure we don't start World War III, huh? Oh, that's about it, sir. We got record coming up. It's very important to the president. Mm -hmm. Well, let me bring you up to speed. Have a seat. Thanks. Now, uh, these are the photos that have just been transmitted from the P3. As you can see, it's a boomer. It's on fire. You can see the smoke trailing from the vents and from a missile hatch, which appears to be missing. Missing? How? We don't know. He could have launched. What? To wreck your summit. Well, if he launched, he didn't hit anything. But he's on the surface, which means he could still launch his payload in, uh, what? Five minutes. You hear anything from Moscow? Not a word. Well, Larry, I suggest that you contact your boss. Ask him to call Moscow on that red phone, find out what the hell is happening. Admiral, you have to understand the political situation is awfully delicate at the moment. We're just days away from what may be an historic... Lieutenant. Sir. Will you explain to Mr. Brock what's at stake here? Yes, sir. This is a cutaway of a boomer. This is the missile bay where we believe the fire is burning. As you can see, she's carrying 16 missiles, each armed with two six-megaton warheads capable of reaching Boston, New York, Washington, and as far inland as Philadelphia or Atlanta. Jesus. Could the fire cause the missiles to launch? If it gets hot enough in the missile bay, it's a definite possibility. The ship is powered by two nuclear reactors, which are in close proximity to the missile bay. If the fire spreads to the reactor room, there could be a meltdown. That's a total of over 200 megatons, a thousand times more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb. You're assuming all their safeguards could fail? In the case of a catastrophic fire, yes. He's moving northeast into deeper water. We assume that the captain is considering scuttling if necessary. That brings most of New England into a fallout footprint. Fallout footprint? The radioactive cloud that would drift with the wind if she goes. Have we got a sub in the area? The Aurora. She's standing off at full combat readiness. This is Larry. Any way you cut it, this submarine represents a clear and present danger to the safety of this country. You've got to alert the president. If she makes any move which might be interpreted as a strike, must authorize the Aurora to sink her instantly. And you should let the Soviets know. I'll talk to Washington. <sighs> Gentlemen, we haven't been able to contain the fire. This leaves us with two options. 
A. We abandon ship and get picked up by the Americans. The implications for Moscow in that event need no further explanation. B. We open some of our missile hatches, execute a short dive. The amount of water we would take on board will extinguish the fire. But there's a chance that it also might take us to the bottom. The only way we can stop the water from overwhelming us is by regaining the surface. We would have to claw our way up. We'd have to stabilize the boat second by second. I don't want to mislead you. This maneuver has not been attempted before. I think it can be done. I need to make a decision. Now, option A, abandon ship and get picked up by the Americans. B, open our missile hatches and dive. Petya, send a message to Moscow. Let them know what we intend to do. Sir. Normally, I would treat this as the product of a deranged mind, but perhaps you can help me. He wants to dive the submarine with the hatches open. He's running out of options. So he's decided on mass suicide? No, sir. If he dives with 16 hatches open, that's exactly what's going to happen. Well, maybe he should try eight. Four. For not longer than three minutes at a depth of 20 meters. During that time, he should take on board enough water to compress the fire against the ceiling of the lower level without compromising the buoyancy. But even with the remotest possibility of surviving such a dive, the Americans will construe the raising of the missile doors as preparation for a launch. They will have no option but to sink it. I don't think they're that stupid. Would you take the risk if you thought an American submarine was going to launch? You wouldn't hesitate, would you? Neither would you, Admiral. But we'd be relying on instinct. Not so, the Americans. Maybe you're right, Captain. But even if you're wrong, I suppose we have no choice. Abandoning ship and allowing the crew to be rescued by the Americans. That's not an option. Business. Prepare to dive. Open the missile hatches. <sighs> Fix a skipper, sailor. On the double. Evans, sir. Moving close. Something's going on. Thanks. Sir. Captain Esticon. What's the situation, Jack? They're opening the missile doors. Helm, take us to primary attack position. Coming into attack position now, sir. This is the captain. In a few moments, we will start a dive to 20 meters with the missile hatches open. This way, we're hoping to kill the fire. Engineers in Moscow advise us to stay under no longer than three minutes. Just to be safe, we will take only two. Be on your posts. Be ready. What's our speed, please? Speed 13 knots. Heading? Heading 090. Arm and compute, both port and both starboard torpedoes. Lock hatches in the open position. Can't do, sir. Comrade, override this safety system. Yes, sir. The bow planes have assumed diving position. I say again, arm and compute. Both port and starboard torpedoes. Increasing speed. Flood the tubes, but do not open the doors. Vents. Open all vents. Baffles. Clear baffles. Captain, submarine on port beam at 1,500 meters. Torpedoes are armed and tubes flooded. Take us down. 20 meters. Dive to 20 meters. 2-0. Two Dive to Pumps. 20 meters. 2-0. This is the captain speaking. All hands now hear this. Assume alert status one, battle stations. This is not a drill. I say again, battle stations. This is not a drill. What's he doing? She's submerging. With his doors open? Bow planes to 15. Bow planes down 15 degrees. Planes Stern planes to zero. Stern planes to zero. 
Holy Christ, it's a launch! Sonar, active! Sonar to active! Sonar to active! Two peaks! Open the torpedo doors! Starboard torpedo doors open, sir. There's been no ignition, Skipper. Prepare to fire starboard A torpedo. Captain to crew? Two minutes! Active sonar coming this way, two pings. They're telling us to back off. Starboard A torpedo ready, sir. Skip, they're trying to put that fire out. Negative XO, they're trying to launch a goddamn missile. There are no goddamn missiles, Skipper. Missiles are still in place, Captain. They're flooding the missile base to try to put the fire out. Bullshit! Who the hell in their right mind would do that, Jack? He's desperate. Sir. Sonar, still no launch. Yes, sonar. Target's resurfaced. Is everyone all right? Here. Good, close it up. Sir. Everyone check your oxygen. Torch is off. 
finish you here. We are all in eight. The rest room is sealed off. Thank you. Where are the rescue ships? Coming closer, sir. We have the Krasnar Maisky on screen. I'd like to evacuate most of the men. We'll just keep a small crew until we've vented the whole ship. Okay. Let's see. Controls to the reactors. They're not responding. The cables must have burned through. Backup systems. Gone. Pulling. Down. Pumps are not functioning, but we're still getting fission. The situation is getting critical. We need to get someone down there to lower those rods. Yes, Captain. Tell the ships to hold off. How far? 10 Ks. Take over. Captain, the power's gone. Propulsion to neutral. Propulsion to neutral. Switch to batteries. Switch to batteries. Tell Belikov he's got to get in there and wind down those rods. We've only got four bottles of oxygen left. That'll be enough. Just get him and somebody who isn't going to breathe a lot into that chamber. You mean one of the kids? Yeah, one of the kids. And hurry, this is a difficult situation. Give it to me straight, Jenna. Is this a meltdown? Not yet. What if you're wrong? If I'm wrong, what difference would it make? We could still dive to the bottom. Let the meltdown happen there. It would save a lot of lives. We've still got a chance. You're wanted, Priminion. Come on, if you do this right, you'll get a medal. Come on. Come on. Who's coming with me? Priminion here. Good man. You done this before? No. No problem. Just follow me. How many bottles of oxygen have we got? She's down by the head. Planes at 180 degrees. Looks like she's losing power. Captain? I hear you, Sonar. I'm picking up an alarm. Can you ID, Sonar? Sounds like a reactor malfunction. I'm relaying it now. So back us off, full power stern. Right. Evans, reverse the screw, full power stern. Sir. Get a message to command, Jack. Top priority. We've got a serious situation here. Hi, Skipper. Who's with him? Preminion. Right. Jesus, Mary. We're looking at a meltdown. The winds are onshore. The freshening to 20 knots. If those reactors go, it's going to make Chernobyl look like a backyard barbecue. I understand that. The president has to at least alert the governors of the New England states. The White House doesn't want the news to get out. They're afraid if it does, they're going to have the whole eastern seaboard stampeding for safety, which is going to cause a lot more damage than some hypothetical meltdown. That is not what this is about, and you know it. If it gets out that the collision between a Soviet and American sub has endangered the whole eastern seaboard, the summit is dead and the peace process with it. We got a, we got a unique opportunity here. Don't and we give just... me that perestroika shit! 
A president called it right the first time, an evil empire. We couldn't trust them before, and we can't trust them now. And we sure as hell can't trust one of their subs sitting off our coast with 32 warheads and its hatches open. Now, if the politicians weren't running things, we would have sunk it an hour ago. That's exactly why the politicians are running things. All right. Look, if those reactors melt down and dump a radioactive cloud on Boston, that's going to damn sure kill your peace process and several million Americans along with it. This order is direct from the White House. The matter is top secret. No one is to know. Temperature in the reactor chamber. Shit. Is it stabilizing? It's getting hotter. Pumps. Build up the pressure in eight. We're going to have a problem getting those guys out of there unless we keep the pressure between the two compartments equal. Let's just get the rods down first. Get the cutters! Mo from Moscow, sir. They want to report on the status of the reactors. Did you report it? No, sir. They said the Americans were under the impression that we have a problem. What shall I tell them? Tell them the truth. That's all we have. Yes, sir. Okay, Sergey. Just watch what I do. We've got four rods, two for each reactor. We have to get them all down. What's going on? Captain, the first rod is down. Thank you. 
Berikov is passed out. But both men are with us and the reactor room is sealed. Good. They still want to go. Captain, the fourth rod's not down yet. He wants to speak to you. Sergei, this is the captain. Can you get back in? Uh, yes, sir. You've got the last available air. Don't take too long. No problem, sir. You've got one bottle of oxygen left. That's all. What's it like in there? <laughs> it's hot. Hey, come on, boys. All right, come on. Yeah, bring the hands. Come on now, together. Push. Come on, push. <laughs> Remember, you've only got ten minutes, that's it. Gennady, increase the pressure in here, or we're not going to be able to get that door open. I'm aware of that. Comrade Chinichny. Control, tell him he's running out of time. <laughs> Come 
Good job, Sergey. Get the hell out of there. Shadishni, release the hatch. <laughs> Tell the ships they can come in now. Yes, sir. <laughs> Tell Moscow. Reactors are shut down. <laughs> the pressure is rising in the reactor room because of the heat. We need to raise the pressure at eight to make the two compartments equal. This is the captain to compartment eight. Whoever is without life support, move into compartment nine. Shanichni, I need to equalize the pressure. And get the ram ready, just in case I need it. Come on, get going. Back to nine. Back to nine. I'm staying. Go. Back to nine. Go. I'm staying. Go. Everyone is in line except the working party, and their compartment is sealed off. Got you. Pumps, bring the pressure up in eight as fast as you can. I'm bringing up the pressure now. Captain, tell us when to start. Sergey, this is the captain. I know you can hear me. I'm at the hatch. There's a valve above your head. Can you see it? Yes. Turn it to the left. It'll vent the compartment to air. Release the pressure. You get me? Start using the ramp. Yes, Captain. Get going, man. Oh, no. Sergei, so, okay, if it's hard for you to speak, just tap the microphone. Okay. When I tell you to get to the hatch, you have to move fast. I know you're low on oxygen, but you can do it. Sergey, do you hear me? Good. 
Just hold on a few more seconds. You've done such a good job. You've saved the boat. You've saved all of us. As far as I'm concerned, you saved the entire east coast of the United States. That's quite an achievement for someone who's, what, 20? That'll be something to remember when you get home. <laughs> and we'll all be home in a couple of days, so you've got to make this last effort. Now, tap the mic so I know you understand. Sergey, tap. Pressure's rising at eight. If we're not careful, we're going to have the same problem there as we did in seven. Okay, Sergey, make your move now. Get over to the hatch. When you feel it move, you've got to help. You've got to pull. Close it. Men in eight. One life for six. Yes. Captain, this is Asnabaev. We're taking on too much water. The Krasnoar Meski is now alongside. Captain to the crew. Abandoned ship.
fire's out. Reactor's been shut down. Thank God. Well, Larry, it looks like the president is going to get a summit after all. Hope he doesn't give away the store. Tell operations to stand down. Aye, sir. Gentlemen, thank you. Get some sleep, eh? We lucked out this time, Mr. Brock, and you know it. Next time, I hope we sink the son of a bitch. going down. This is the captain. Boomer is going down. Stand by for secondary detonation. I say again, stand by for secondary detonation. One thousand feet. Two thousand feet. Three thousand feet. Five thousand feet and still accelerating, sir. Speed fifty knots. Stand by for the big one, gentlemen. Sonar? Still nothing, sir. Jack, take a message for command, please. Boomer sank at 2,230 hours. Depth sonar? 18,000 feet, sir. Crew evacuated with no apparent casualties. There was no secondary detonation from ship's reactor or onboard missiles. Request air and sea recon to monitor radiation. We are standing by. Not celebrating, Lieutenant? No. No, sir, I'm not. Thinking about those men? Actually, I'm thinking about the over 200 megatons worth of radioactive material that's been dropped in the Atlantic. Well, given the alternative, I'd say we have a great deal to be thankful for. He must be a remarkable man. The captain. Mm. I'm not sure the Kremlin would agree. Where's Pshini? 
Dimitri. I think he's talking to headquarters. So how are things in Moscow? Well, I spoke to the Admiral. He argued your case. But there was nothing he could do. He wants me to take possession of the logbook, code books, and the nuclear keys. All right. asking for you. <laughs> Captain, I'll need your party card. Officers and crew of the K219, all present and correct, sir. Officers and men of K219, we are overjoyed at your safe return. You will spend a few days at the recreation camp near here, where you will be debriefed. And then you will go home to your families. Your courage in the past few days has been in the highest tradition of the Soviet Navy. It is my privilege to honor some of you on the recommendation of your captain. Reminian, Sergei Sergeyevich. Reminian, Sergei Sergeyevich. Still on patrol, sir. Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev met as planned in Reykjavik, Iceland. President Reagan expressed his condolences on the loss of life aboard the K-219, although the United States government denied any involvement in the sinking of the submarine. Upon their return to the Soviet Union, the crew of the K-219 was broken up and assigned to different ships in the North Atlantic. Captain Britanov was dismissed from the Soviet Navy. <laughs> <laughs> 